Arty friends. So today we are doing the field test for the Sakura Koi CAC watercolor test. In our last video, we explored the creative artist colors recently released by Sakura of America. We played around with and swatched the four metallics that were included in the set and the eight. No, wait. That is not eight. Cannot matter. Yeah. The eight fluorescents in the set. I also compared the metallics against Fine Tech and against Kuratake Gansai Tambi Starry Skies or Starry Colors Watercolors. And then we also did a bit of playing around mixing colors, basically seeing if we could make mud. So for today's installment, we are going to do a very Lisa Frank inspired painting of a cute elf girl with big 80s style hair. The materials we're going to be using today are the Sakura Koi CAC 12 color set, a Sakura Koi, I believe this is one, two, three, four, five, six, by 424 color set, a Canson Biggie watercolor pad, a cup of clean water, a couple different palettes, and then a selection of brushes, most of which are synthetic, but a couple are natural hair brushes. Also going to be using some paper towels and Kleenexes, and we're also going to use a bulldog clip just to hold our paper secure and to prevent it from buckling too much. For this demonstration, I am going to be mixing with both palettes, and that is because these very bright, intense fluorescent colors and metallics are not really suitable for, you know, actual color mixing. And ideally, if you have an eyedropper, I would recommend using one tends to be somewhat prone to spilling. Rather, it's just hard to pour from a glass like that. And I have not only painted with, but I have reviewed Sakura Koi watercolors here on this channel. And I have several videos demonstrating how I handle them. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial for that, you can check out some of the other videos here. Now, I'm going to actually, rather than mixing my own skin tone, I am going to use the included peachy color, since I very rarely, if ever, if never ever, paint with that color. So it'll be interesting to see how it handles. And I sketched this with pink color Eno lead. What I like about the pink color Eno lead is that it has a tendency of dissolving. So what it really does is it just kind of adds to your painting rather than distracting. And I'm painting kind of dark and then mixing in some water to kind of lighten up what I've done.
So I've got my first layer down. I'm going to give that a chance to dry. Now while this isn't fully dry, I think it's going to be dry enough. I am painting in Louisiana, so the humidity has been pretty high. And I'm just using the same color. Slightly more saturated. And the reason I'm not painting with the water brushes that come with these sets is that I find water brushes tend to add too much water to the area, which makes it difficult to control and difficult to paint with. So I personally don't always enjoy painting with water brushes. And this or the skin tone, which is kind of a peachy orange, is definitely very peachy orange. But I think, I hope, it's going to work well with the neons that we're going to be introducing later on. Alright, so her skin is still drying. It's probably going to take a while to dry. I'm going to grab a little bit of light blue. And add a little bit of shading to the tops of her eyes. I'm also going to do a little bit of regular yellow to add um, to kind of create the base color for the neon yellow. So it's going to work really light. That's a pretty good base coat for that. And by establishing the colors like this, it's going to make it easier for me to add the real colors later on. I'm also going to grab some blue. And I'm leaving lots of white on the paper because fluorescents tend to mess with my eyes. I don't know about you guys, but fluorescents tend to really mess with my eyes, make it hard for me to see. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of light orange. And I want to use that because I basically want her hair to kind of do an ombre effect. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of this red, which is usually kind of pink when you water it down. It might even be a nice opera rose. And without dragging my hand, And to be honest, this is already kind of cute, um, like 80s anime aesthetic as it is. It 
do a little bit of wet into wet there, wet into wet here, then underneath. And then grab a little bit of a cooler or rather a warmer red and just kind of dance that in a little bit. So already that looks really cute. Like I would be pretty, pretty satisfied with that anyway. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of red violet. kind of dance that in up here. So I really like her hair like this. It's actually very pretty and I hate to like progress and ruin it. I am, but I think if I do end up ruining it, I will probably do another piece very similar to this where we get to explore this technique in depth a little bit more. So I'm gonna let her hair dry. And while that happens, I'm going to work on adding a little bit of blush to her cheeks, coloring in her mouth and coloring in her eyes. So I want to use the fluorescence and the metallics as much as possible. So, but I think if I use them too much, then they're going to kind of lose the impact. And then it's just going to become like a bright blob of color, which I know some of you think is probably sounds great, but I promise that was like my coloring aesthetic for a really long time, too long. And it doesn't work out as well as you would think. So what it's really better to do if you're working with these really intense colors is to kind of create accents. So that's what I'm going to do instead. Use them as accents. And believe me, they are intense enough that you will think I used a lot more of them. But I am going to use bright saturated colors in general and in other places. So right now I'm using a little bit of red violet to shade the skin. And what's kind of a problem with this really intense uh, sort of peachy skin color I use is that it's kind of opaque. It has a lot of optical brighteners in it, so it does want to lift up a little bit. I probably have made a mess of her skin. We'll find out after this has had a chance to dry because layering very translucent things on top of very opaque things usually tends to work poorly. For those of you who are familiar with oil, um, there's the adage fat over lean and I think that applies to, or yeah, I think that applies to watercolor as well where we should really do our saturated colors on top of our very thin light layers. So I already kind of started this off on a poor foot by using this interesting sort of skin tone color as a base. But like I said, we will find out, we will see. See, 
I can't do quite as much blending as I would like to do because I'm really afraid it's going to disrupt the original skin tone and kind of make a muddy color. So I'm trying to work light. I'm trying to just kind of dance my brush across the surface and not spend too much time working it. So adding the shadow to her face did kind of change her expression. She originally looked sweet and playful and now she looks more mischievous. I don't have a problem with that. I just thought it was interesting how it can really make a difference. So now that not everything has dried, it is pretty damp here. I'm going to try though to paint her eyes without it bleeding everywhere. So I'm using a blue that I think might, I mean, it looks a lot like the electric blue in the CAC set. So I think it'll be a good base for that. I'm also going to add just a little more up here. This is a Karen Dosh brush I got in the fan color set. It's really good though for doing hair. You can get really nice crisp lines. And I want to do her makeup as well. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start painting a little bit more detail in her hair. Since with sort of fluorescent colors, you can't always get, you know, depth of color or color development. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shading I'm also going to go back into my orange and add a little shading there as well Maybe I should do a tutorial on painting rainbow ombre hair. And I'm painting a little loose, a little sloppy, which is okay. I'm pointing this out because you guys know I usually paint a little tighter than what I'm doing here. Or those who watch my channel know, I usually do paint a little tighter than this. Ooh, that's pretty. Definitely going to have to go back and do a follow-up. good.
then I'm also going to start doing her makeup at least kind of above her eyes. So we're channeling Lisa Frank. I'm going to do pink and orange will be nice. with a little pink on her cheeks. We'll see how this dries. It'll be interesting. I'm painting a lot looser than I normally do, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. So this has had a little while to dry. I think I wanna use green on her hair bow. So I'm gonna to try to keep it as light and airy as I've kept everything else. Don't really want to overwork it because I am going to be painting over it. So I'm just using this as kind of a base color and I'm going to grab some yellow and mix that in as well. I do still have a lot of wet areas. So I'm going to try and paint around that. I think after this base layer, we can get started on using the fluorescence. Now I'm still not sure how I want to use the metallics. I know I need to, I'm just not sure how. Right, so I think we finally get to start with our fluorescence. I think I'm gonna begin with blue. And did not pre-activate these, so I should probably do that. Now my water is getting really cloudy. That began with the Jean Brilliant, that's usually what that color is referred to as, but it can work as a skin tone in many cases. So I'm trying to pick up lots of pigment. Okay, so that is blue down. I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of this purple. I 
and start washing that in. Then I'm going to go over here to the fluorescent yellow. And I mean, for some of these colors, I thought they were already pretty bright and, you know, Lisa Frank 90s pop. But then you bring in the CAC colors and they're really bright, really fluorescent. Now, since I did the underpainting, hopefully everything kind of has a little more oomph, a little more backbone than what we would have had otherwise. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of the CAC Fluoro Orange. Ooh, that's like crazy highlighter bright, like a little nauseating bright. It is so bright. <laughs> and then for her hair, I'm gonna go back and kinda do the same thing, but I'm gonna try not to touch this area here too much. I really liked the sort of sunset colors I got with her hair the first time. So I don't want to lose too much of that. I know the fluoro and it layering actually layers kind of cool and pretty. You get like a really intense, um, not an orange, but like a peach kind of color. It's really pretty. So I'm going to work some of the yellow up into here. I don't know if my camera can capture it. The orange is not my favorite, but it might dry a little tamer than it goes down. Oh gosh, I got the blue in there. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. We'll just let it go. Put a little pink up in there. Now I feel like if I had gone straight to these fluoro colors, you would not have been able to see as much color development because they're so bright. My camera probably has some difficulty with them. They're really, really intense which is, it makes for interesting effects in real life when you can look at it in person and see how the colors interact. And that is very, 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 very 80s, 80s, early 90s, tastic. Just like really bright, intense color. It looks like a binder I had in like second grade. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry before I make any more progress. All right, this is looking a little bit messy. I'm okay with that. This is a field test after all. We're figuring things out, solving problems, learning about our materials, and that's always important. Oh, that's gonna turn to mud if I persist. It's really neat though to see how these colors interact and layer over the original Koi palettes. But it's also kind of a shame because I really liked the colors I had originally. 
So I feel a little bit bummed like I'd messed those up. All right, so I'm gonna kind of go back in to her makeup. I have this darker hot pink color. These also seem to use up fast, maybe a little faster than the other Koi palette, and that's probably optical brighteners in the paints themselves. You know, it takes more color to get enough coverage. And that purple's a little darker than I would like, but I'm just gonna have to deal. And then this area over here kind of turned to mud. So what I might do when that finish drawing, finishes drawing is either go in with a lot more pink or go in with this darker pink here. Um, I just don't wanna lose sort of the fade trans transition between colors, but I have a feeling I'm kind of losing that anyway. Fortunately, I took a lot of uh, photos in the earlier stages of this watercolor, so I do have reference, so I can at least revisit this at another time and try to recreate it. So at this point, I'm having some issues with lifting, so I'm going to switch over to a softer brush. We'll see if that helps. I'm going to apply some hot pink in this area and then go on with this sort of magenta color. And I will say that these colors are very overpowering. Like I said earlier, I really liked the colors I had mixed initially. And uh, if I weren't doing a field test, I would regret not having stuck with those colors. But since we're doing a field test, it is important to kind of know what you're dealing with. Now, I also have to be careful because these really do want to lift up it's because it's really damp in here. So I have to be careful not to overwork things. I need to let that dry as well. So as I mentioned before, everything is taking kind of a long time to dry since it's so, well, it wants to rain. I'll put it that way. Hasn't yet, but it really, really wants to. So it's pretty humid out there. All right, this green is a little bit more blue than the base green I use, so I'm gonna end up covering a little bit more than I wanted to. I'm also going to use um, colors from the other Koi palette to shade and darken this. But of course, that means everything has had to have a chance to dry. On one hand, these colors are fun, but on the other hand, I would just recommend using colors from the 24 Color Koi palette 
you can get really nice, bright, intense, fun colors, very Lisa Frank-esque palette without some of the, I don't know, for me personally, fluorescence kind of mess with my eyes and it makes it harder for me to gauge colors. So if that's not a problem you deal with, then it's probably not going to be a concern for you and it's not going to be a detriment for you. But for me, it's definitely something I need to think about and be aware of. But it's really neat to be able to watercolor with what feels like highlighters. The colors fluoresce the way highlighters do. So, you know, they're a little sloppy, they're a little muddy, but they're also a lot of fun. Now, I would recommend getting them for as good a price as you can. Try to wait for them to go on sale. Don't pay full price unless you really just enjoy painting with highlighter colors. But you can also use some highlighters, which are typically um, water-based markers. You can use some highlighters like watercolor markers. So even if you don't have this particular set, I think you can probably get a lot of the effects that you're looking for if you just know how to use a highlighter set for those effects. And I, if you guys are interested, I can definitely do a tutorial on that. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I have a feeling if I keep going like this, I'm going to make a mess. Especially given how damp it is outside. So I think what I want to do with this is I want to give it a chance to dry, which may take a really long time because it's about to rain, but I want to give it a chance to dry and then I'm going to come in and do um, add some shadow with the original palette, uh, tighten up some of the details. But right now, given that it's about to rain, this is probably the farthest I'm gonna be able to get for now. All right, so this is almost entirely dry. It isn't entirely dry, but it's almost entirely dry. I'm going to start adding in some of the accents from the other palette. In fact, I'm zoomed out enough that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And we'll see how well things layer. I like how it looks when it has one of the non-fluoro 
colors on top of it. It makes for kind of a nice pop of color, good contrast. Grab a little bit of indigo, since this blue doesn't necessarily get a whole lot darker. Oh. Gotta mix it even thicker. I'm having some lift up and fat over lean problems, or rather lean over fat, really. So we're gonna activate that a little bit more. Hopefully it'll absorb some water and handle a little bit nicer. Go over to my fluoro purple. It'll be interesting trying to add details in here. So what do you guys think of this set? Is this a set you're gonna wanna try? Or is this a set that you're gonna, you're, your life is complete without it, you don't need it? Try or pass by, I guess would be a good way to put it. For me, it's not a particularly hard set to use. Now, one of the larger sets that includes the pearlescents might be a little more useful, but I currently already own several sets that have pearlescents, and I also know how to mix my own iridescents. There are plenty of iridescent mediums on the market, so this isn't filling a niche in my life that is really, you know, a, it's not filling anything that's really missing. But I also have a fairly extensive collection of art supplies, and not everybody hoards <laughs> art supplies the way I do. So maybe this is a set that would really fill in the holes in your collection. The fluorescents are cool. I definitely want to put my money where my mouth is and do a watercolor demonstration where I use like inexpensive fluorescent markers to see if we can achieve the same effects. Now if these are light fast that is kind of a different take on the problem because these sort of colors tend to be extremely light sensitive, light reactive, and they tend to fade very quickly. So if Sakura has introduced a light fast 
fluorescent to the market. That's kind of a horse of a different color. For me, I find that the way I handle the colors, they tend to get kind of muddy and unimpressive very quickly. I think it's because I have a lot of brightness going on, a lot of color going on, and that can get overwhelming very fast. So for those of you who might be interested in this palette, I would really recommend kind of having a sparing hand. Ooh, speaking of, I got my hand in my paint. Did not have a sparing enough hand. It also really wants to lift up off the paper. So it's not really, it's not really a paint you can do layers over or you can really glaze over. So you kind of need to wait. until your final details. Get my hand all up in those paints, making a mess. I'm gonna grab a little bit of burnt sienna. kind of tighten up some of these details a little. It's so cold in this room, my hand is shaking pretty bad though. It feels a lot tougher and more like a misfit, like Jim and the Holograms. Misfit than I really intended, but that's all right. Oh, that's still wet.
All right, so what I am going to do is I'm gonna let this dry, then I'm going to lightly ink it, and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this piece. Alright, so I inked this and I touched it up with a little bit of re really old Reeves Chinese White that I mixed like it was gouache. So some of the color isn't quite, like the white isn't quite as strong as it could be. Um, my camera isn't able to capture how fluorescent this is on video. So I will have photos included so you guys can get a better idea of how this actually looks. But it's actually very fluorescent. It's as though I painted this with highlighters. So if you're looking for that kind of fluorescence, if you're looking for that kind of Lisa Frank intense color, this could be the set you're looking for. However, there are other neon watercolors on the market. The Como Rebi set includes neons. Um, I believe Gansai Tambi makes neons. So I would love to compare the Como Rebi set with this Sakura Koi creative artist color set just to see. I also didn't use any of the metallics in this one and I could actually probably change that really quickly. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the golds on top of her eye makeup here, just to kind of give it a more shimmery appearance. Move the Chinese white out of the way. And it won't really be visible on camera, but it will be visible in person. Because, oh, that's actually very pretty in person. Um, the The metallics they include are actually fairly translucent. So you're not going to get a thick, opaque metallic the way you would with some other brands, but it can be really nice for adding really subtle details like we're doing here. And I'll also add just a little bit of the silver, which is more like a white pearl but I'll do that just in, just to add a little bit of sparkle to her eyes. All right, I think I am done. So my thoughts on the Sakura Koi creative artist colors. Now, I have to caveat again, I only have the 12 color set. They are available in larger sets, which seems to include not just the fluorescence and the metallics, but also pearlescence of various colors. However, you can mix this white pearl with these colors. In fact, I will demonstrate that for you guys really quick. So we're going to take some regular blue from my other Koi palette and we're going to take some of this, well, the silver, that I keep wanting to call it white. So you can mix them together and you can get a nice pearlescent blue. Let's say you want a green per pearlescent. All right. We've got this darker green here. Take some of the silver. Mix it in. Now we have a nice green pearlescent. Let's say we want a fluorescent pearlescent. Okay, we've got hot pink here. We can mix it in with the silver. 
for a really pretty pink fluorescent. We can mix the pink fluorescent with any of the gold or the copper. I'm going to do it with the gold. And this will give you a really, really pretty kind of orangey blush color because it's the hot pink mixed with the fluorescent, or I'm sorry, the fluorescent hot pink mixed with the gold. You can do it with the copper. Get another interesting color. You can also get kind of duochrome effects. So we'll take this dark green. We'll grab some of the copper, mix the two together. It gives you kind of a beautiful green with a bronzy tint to it. So you really don't need to have the huge set. You've got, if you've got any other watercolors, but specifically if you've got any of the other koi sets and you know a little bit about mixing colors. We can make mix the fluorescent purple with some of the copper. So you can get some colors that you wouldn't even be able to get if you were using their set. You can mix some really pretty colors on your own. see if I can catch some of that duochrome but anyway it's a nice little set it's nice to have the fluorescence and the metallics in one handy place it's nice that it works well it plays well with the existing koi watercolor sets that are available on the market. So if you feel like you need to get this set, I would recommend you get the smaller of the sets and then do your own color mixing. And I would also recommend that you don't get this set as a standalone set. You get it in addition to some of your other watercolor sets or as an accent to say your water-based markers or to your alcohol markers. So it's not really a mixing set. It's an addition to existing sets. Now, Sakura also has a new studio set that comes in 60 and in 72 colors. And gosh, I am tempted. However, I still need to go over the 30 color set I recently got. So if you're interested in me reviewing the larger Sakura sets, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, informative, and maybe inspiring for you guys. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I look forward to comparing this set with the Como Rebi set. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys!